crisis and a key moment for President Obama. For seven and a half years, our nation's first black president has found himself at the epicenter of the stories involving race and justice in America, at times in part based on his own words, such as suggesting wrongly early on in his presidency that police acted stupidly by arresting a prominent black Harvard professor following a confrontation at that professor's home. You may recall that resulted in the so-called beer summit between the president, Vice President Biden, Professor Henry Louis Gates, the man who had been confronted by police, and Cambridge Police Sergeant James Crowley. Then there was President Obama's decision to insert himself into the controversy surrounding the fatal shooting of Trayvon Martin in Florida, saying, quote, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Two years later, the president would inject his administration again into a legal matter, the shooting case involving Michael Brown and police officer Darren Wilson in Ferguson, Missouri, sending in his Justice Department and dozens of FBI agents, even enlisting the help of the fiery activist Reverend Al Sharpton, who helped perpetuate the story that Michael Brown, who was black, died with his hands up begging for his life, a story that turned out to be a blatant lie which Al Sharpton refuses to admit to this day. Then five days ago, five police officers were gunned down by a madman who not only hated cops, but specifically said he wanted to target white cops. And at the memorial service for those fallen officers today, President Obama again stepped into the breach. Race relations have improved dramatically in my lifetime. Those who deny it, are dishonoring the struggles that helped us achieve that progress. But we know but, but America, we know that bias remains, although most of us do our best to guard against it and teach our children better. None of us is entirely innocent. No institution is entirely immune. And that includes our police departments. As a society, we choose to underinvest in decent schools. We allow poverty to fester so that entire neighborhoods offer no prospect for gainful employment. We flood communities with so many guns that it is easier for a teenager to buy a Glock than get his hands on a computer or even a book was struck by the turn that he made, and especially by that last uh, comment that he made that you showed on the air where he said, you know, that it would be easier for a, for a teenager uh, to get a Glock pistol uh, than to get a gun or even a book. Now that's nonsense, but it was in furtherance of the agenda that he was uh, talking about, about, you know, spending in the, uh, in the inner cities, uh, about gun control, and all the rest of it, and uh, I was frankly disappointed that he chose to go in that direction. You know, the president has a problem in the sense that he, to him, I think, racism in America has a white face, never a black face. And that's why you heard him say in the aftermath of the, the hideous murders of the policemen in Dallas that be, we might never be able to untangle the motives of the shooter. The shooter's motives were perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. He said them in his conversations with the police that he wanted to kill police and he wanted to kill white people. Um, I'm not saying the president would deny that that's what he said, but the president's reaction to it suggests that, that he glosses over these sorts of things. The same way, Megan, that when it comes to the hideous violence against blacks, black on black violence in cities like Chicago and Baltimore and others, the president has been virtually silent on that, on that issue, though far more black lives are lost in that way than are ever lost to incidents involving police shootings. Mm -hmm. Breaking news tonight, three officers dead, three wounded in Baton Rouge, a really tough day for Baton Rouge and for the country, really. Here to talk about how to keep our police safe is Sheriff David Clark of Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. He is going to be speaking at the Republican convention tomorrow night. Sheriff, thank you uh, very much for that horrific day. I spoke to uh, the heads of the Sheriff Department, the Police Department, and uh, the state police down there, and they told us how their hearts were reeling. Their message is peace and coming together in the country. What's your message? <laughs> you don't believe that for one minute, do you? That their message is? Yeah. Uh, that's what they said to me. Okay. Yeah, believe them. Of Any protests them over the deaths of these cops today in Baton Rouge? I don't know that. I don't know that. Any riots or protests over the uh, uh, police officers in Dallas, Texas? What are you asking? 
It's a pretty simple question. I asked you if what's your message to the people, their message is one of peace. What is your message? My message has been clear from day one two years ago. This anti-cop sentiment from this hateful ideology called Black Lives Matter has fueled this rage against the American police officer. I predicted this two years ago. So do what you, I, what I, what I want to know, sure? know. Okay, Sharon. Do I want to know? With all due respect, do you know that this was because of that? Do we yes, know I that do. As a law enforcement officer? I've been watching this for two years. I predicted this. Yeah. This anti-police rhetoric sweeping the country yeah. has turned out some hateful things inside of people that are now playing themselves out on the American police officer. I want to know, with all of the black-on-black -black violence in the United States of America, by the way, when the tragedies happened in Louisiana and Minnesota, do you know that 21 black people were murdered across the United States? Well, the, well, there was was black, there any reporting there was on that? a black that? officer who was killed today, but let, let's... Was just, there any reporting on Sheriff, that? Sheriff, please, let's just, keep, let's just keep the volume down here. So I understand, and I and listen. I don't. I got, I'm I looking don't at disagree. three dead cops uh, this week, Sheriff, and I'm looking just, at five last please. year. You trying to tell me to keep it she'll down? Just please, if you will, just please. We can keep it civil. So because we admit the message to people at home, I'm sure you want is one of civility. I wish, Don. I, want, I wish I you like had that have, message of like civility. I would like to have a conversation toward with this you. hateful ideology. These I, purveyors I of don't hate. Know what my message is? That's what, what I want to say to you is these wait, people let me preach. Are you going to get a word in? And virtue we'll be right in the back. name We're of gonna go to break, hate. And we'll be right back. Are you going to let me talk? We can do it. Back now live with Sheriff David Clark uh, of uh, Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. We're here live in Cleveland. Uh, you're set to speak tomorrow night. And again, all I want to do is have a conversation. I can't have a conversation with you if we're both talking at the same time. What it sounds like to me is that you're accusing me of violence and supporting something, a narrative that I'm not necessarily in support of. And if you're, if that's what you're accusing me of violence, then you can leave. That's not true. I don't support violence of any type against police officers, against anyone. So if you're accusing me of that, then you're welcome to leave. But if you want to have a conversation, I am more than willing to welcome a conversation with you. I don't disagree with you about there is a narrative across the country that could be harming uh, police officers. But we don't know right now as if someone who's in law enforcement, if that was the actual cause of it. Go ahead. Let me ask you this. Do we know that, th that generally the American law enforcement officers are racist? Do we know this? Go on. I ask a is question. That, is that a, is that a, do I know if American general law enforcement are racist? Yeah. I don't think anyone is accusing. If you're, if you're insinuating that people are accusing or saying that law enforcement across this country as a whole are racist, then your assumption is wrong. First and of all, this whole anti-police rhetoric is based on a lie. There is no data, and you know this, there is no data, there is no research that proves any of that nonsense. None. Even it, you'd have to be more specific about what data and what nonsense you're talking about. That law enforcement officers treat black males different than white males in policing in these urban centers. There centers. is data that supports. There is that. not data. The, the, uh, no, the, the president. The president spoke about it. Cedric Alexander, the who president is a law enforcement has been officer. lying about it. He said it again the other day when he said black males are two times more likely to be shot by a law enforcement officer than white male. Don, that is a lie. That is not a lie. It the is a lie. Yes. Show me. The research show that, me. The research show that, it we to me have, that we have from the Washington Post that, that The Washington Post study. debunked that nonsense. There's also research. He also said Sheriff, this, Don. There's also research he from continues. a Harvard professor that also showed that black people are treated more aggressively by police officers. No, you are than other wrong people. in your interpretation of that Harvard study because I read the study. That's not what he said. He that said he was surprised to find he was surprised that to find that in shootings of the of the most severe in shootings that he found no evidence that there was a difference. Also, it should be noted that that study was a very small sampling of police departments across the country. Many people did not find it credible, but it is also interesting that in that research, he found that blacks were treated differently when it came to aggressive policing, but for the most egregious shootings, he found no difference. That's what that study showed. Well, based on what, just generally? 
Are we talking about high crime areas? Are we talking about, we talking about police, police officers across. being under attack? Because let's go back to where this whole thing started in Ferguson, Missouri. Sure. The sure. lie was hands up, respect, don't shoot. a whole bunch of things into one. If okay. we can do one specific That's thing, where this whole it, phony movement we'll started. It. it started out as hands You're up, don't shoot. talking about Black Lives Matter. Right. Okay. So if you if you want to if you you would need to speak to someone who is a member of Black Lives Matter about whether they are have perpetrated a fraud on the American people. That's up to Black Lives Matter. That's not me. I'm neither neither a member of Black Lives Matter, I'm neither a supporter or someone who doesn't yeah. support them. I simply report on Black Lives Matter. Do you condemn the anti-police rhetoric? coming from this hateful ideology. As a journalist sitting here on television, I don't have to condemn anyone, that, anything. That is something that well, you should I do. ask well, I other do. people around the country I that condemn their them jobs to condemn Just that. like I condemn I the hateful the ideology out of groups like the KKK, all right? I condemn it. There is no place in American discourse for that sort of vile, vitriolic hate coming out of this ideology. This has fueled and fan the flames of this anger toward the American police officer. There's only one group in America, one time, that truly cares about the lives of black people in these urban ghettos. And it's the American police officer who goes down there on a daily basis, puts their life on the line to protect who? Black people. So when you say we just want to have a conversation, let's have a conversation about the black on black crime which kills more black males which is more of a threat to any black male in the united states than a, than a, than a law enforcement officer sheriff yes that's a whole that's a different conversation we can walk and chew gum at the same time there's an issue when it comes to violence black on black crime or black it's it's crime white people kill white people tend to kill oh, white yeah. people you know, black people go. tend not to kill black people numbers. not in the numbers not in the okay, numbers that's fine but that's a different i don't care who white people are that is a are different killing. conversation than police brutality and we're not having that conversation right now what and again i want was, i want to be very clear with you, you this, i condemn was, all violence of any type was just, just for the record was the situation between mike brown and darren wilson was that police brutality but we're not talking about Mike yes or and no. Darren Wilson. I am. No, if you're asking me, if you're asking me what the Justice Department showed, the Justice Department showed that, de that it exonerated Officer Darren Wilson, and that the hands up, don't shoot narrative was a false narrative. That has been reported by and CNN that and by others. Was another phony report. What does that, that have was to debunked. do with Baton Rouge, Louisiana? All right, because when you take in what does that have when to you do take with in Baton Rouge, Louisiana? rates of involvement in violent crime and crime in general, but violent crime, you're gonna see that black males are <laughs> overrepresented, yeah. overrepresented yeah. in terms of being involved in violent crime. That's gonna mean sure. more arrests, that's gonna mean more people going to prison. This stuff has already been debunked. Sure. That's a different conversation. Every one time, many people every don't, time and you many, don't have a response to something I say, you say it's not that I don't have a response to you, is that we're having two different conversations. I'm talking about I'm asking the questions here. You're answering the questions by asking questions about some other subject that we're not discussing. We're talking that is about not a this hateful ideology called Black Lives Matter. You said you're not a member. You can't be a member. It's not that's, an organization. That's There's no what, structure. That's what, that's what you're talking about. It is an ideology. Listen, I and, I and it is a and hateful I understand ideology. That you're very, I understand it's a very These stressful individuals, time for you. These individuals. And Sheriff, we, we appreciate you coming on. They preach thank you. vile and vitriol in the name of virtue. Yeah, thank you, Sheriff. We appreciate it. We understand it's a very tough time for you. We'll be right back.